Are you repelling your visitors before they even get a chance to read a word of your content? Hi, I'm Steph from Thrive Themes, and in this video, we're going to go through the four visitor experience mistakes that you can't afford to make. Mistake number one, are you leaving your visitors baffled when they arrive on your website? When we've been working on our business for so long, it becomes really hard to see it through new eyes. This is what we call the curse of knowledge. Once you know something, it's hard to know what it's like not to know that thing. Let's take a look at the first example so I can explain this further. So as you can see on this website, you can clearly see they do something with property, but it's kind of impossible to tell what. There's a whole bunch of services up the top. Uh, they have information evenings, blog. It makes you wonder if they're an education service, if they help fund developments, if they do developments. There's no indication of what this company actually does on their website. So you don't know if you want to read further. Now, how do you make sure you're not making this mistake in your own business? We recommend you do what we call the friend of a friend test. Get an acquaintance that doesn't really know what you do for your business or what your unique selling proposition is. Open up your website, let them look at it for five seconds and then close the browser down. Now ask them, what does your business do? If they can't tell you, then you need to reshuffle your homepage and make your unique selling proposition much clearer. Let's take a look at a good example of this so you know where to start. So this is the website for Grum and you have it in one sentence, post on your Instagram from your computer. Now I'm sure they do a lot more than that and they probably have a lot more features than that. But this one sentence allows you to identify that this business has what you need and that you would like to read on. You don't have to cover everything with your one sentence. You just need to indicate to your visitor that they're in the right place. Mistake number two, are you completely overwhelming your visitor before they even have a chance to get to know you? Of course you want to take advantage of every opportunity possible to capture your visitors details. So it can be tempting to throw up light boxes and calls to action on every single pain point that you can think of. Unfortunately, this just completely overwhelms a new visitor to your site. Let's take a look at a few examples of this done wrong so you can see just how unnerving it can be. Now, as you can see, this is a really beautifully designed website. It's quite elite, but as you scroll down, there are just so many calls to action. You don't know where to click. All of the buttons have the same weight, the same color. Your eye is just drawn to so many different places that you're overwhelmed when you first get to the site. And on top of that, they have a slide in pop up, which is not what you want to be the most noticeable thing on your website. Another example is this website, which we've gone into through a blog post. Now it looks fine when you first get there, but scroll down a little bit, move your mouse. There is a pop up on the side asking us to follow him on Facebook, an exit intent pop up and a browser pop up as well. I haven't even had a chance to read this guy's content and I'm being overwhelmed with him asking me to do things. You want to give your visitor a chance to connect with you and your content before you start throwing things in their faces or pointing them in a million different directions. So how can you be sure you're not making this mistake in your own website? You may be sitting pretty thinking, my website doesn't do this, I know, but this can be a tricky one. Your computer has been cookied, which means your website can show you a different version to what a brand new visitor would see. To check this, open your website in an incognito window. Now, this will show you exactly what a brand new visitor will see when they arrive on your website. Make sure you sit there for a little bit to trigger any timed pop-ups. Scroll down the page to make sure there are no scroll triggered pop-ups and navigate your mouse to the top of the browser to trigger any exit intent pop-ups that you might have. So how do you determine which step is the most important and what call to action you want to focus on on your website? I recommend you have a look at your buyer's journey. What is it that you want them to do above all else when they arrive at your website? Make this your key call to action or your key light box pop-up. Now, if you really want to segment your list or you have a couple of very different services, 
you can use a multiple choice light box. I'll show you an example of this on the Thrive Themes website. So as you can see here, there are three very clear options on the light box. The visitor can easily identify what they need and navigate to that button. Once you click on it, there's an opt-in offer that is specially designed for that particular pain point. This is the most user-friendly way of segmenting your audience. Mistake number three. Can your visitor find what they're looking for with just one click? Okay, so now that I've told you you're not allowed to bombard your new visitor with as many options as possible, how do you make sure they're going to get what they need from your website? The answer is in a clearly defined menu. Now let's have a look at what effect a badly laid out menu can have on your website. We'll navigate back to the first example that I showed you, which is the Subpro website. As you can see, they have two menus here, which is incredibly confusing. Not only that, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to the menu headings. They've got a few of their services and then their disclaimer button, an information evening, their team, testimonials, and the contact page. It's just very messy and not very intuitive. So how can you test this on your own website? If you've got more than seven menu items, that's definitely too much. If you've got less than that, we recommend you do the friend of a friend test again. Tell them to try and navigate to a specific page within your site. Can they intuitively and quickly navigate to that site in one click? Or is it difficult for them? How do you know which are the most important menu items to have on your website? Make a list of all the pages on your website. Make note of all the ones that are the most important or the most frequently visited. Now make sure that you can easily navigate to those pages from your menu items. Say you have a group of services, make sure that you have a heading that easily identifies that, such as what we do. The user will know if they click on that, they're going to get your services. Now it sounds really logical, but it can be quite hard to intuitively organize your pages in this way. So make sure you use the friend of a friend test again to test your new menu items to see if they are as user friendly as you think they are. Mistake number four. Are you making it hard for your visitor to trust you? Trust is a massive factor in the buying process, especially when your website is the only thing your customer has to go by. If it's a mishmash of different pages and redirections, it can seem really off-putting, unprofessional, and even scammy. Let's take a look at an example of this so you can see just how unsettling it can be. So as you can see, this website has a clear style. Now this pop-up box doesn't match it, but that's fine. I'll enter my details. So this opt-in is offering me an easy vegan wardrobe guide. And it's got a little picture of the guide that I'll be getting. So I'll enter my details and click download now. So as you can see, I've been redirected to this get response default thank you page. It's in a completely different style to the other website. It's got a different logo and a different URL. Now, it doesn't even make mention of the vegan guide that I signed up for. For someone that's not familiar with internet marketing, they probably don't even know what GetResponse or MailChimp is. So when they're redirected to a default thank you page of a email service provider's website, it can be incredibly confusing and seem even scammy. So how do you make sure you're not making the same mistake on your own website? Open your website in an incognito window again and sign up for your mailing list. Follow the entire sequence after that and make sure that it's all congruent and makes sense. If you can redirect to a thank you page within your own website, most email service providers give you the option to do this and it changes the user experience completely. I want to show you an example of a good user experience when opting in to a free ebook guide. Okay, so I'm going to enter my details. Now, as you can see, there's a graphic here of the PDF ebook that I'm going to receive and I click send it to me now. And I've been redirected here, which is the same URL and the same image of the book that I will be receiving. Now, this is directly addressing the fact that I've just signed up to receive this book and it tells me how I can get the book. Even if you're not gonna provide your opt-in offer directly after they enter their email address, 
at least state on the page that they will receive further directions on how to take advantage of the opt-in. So there you have it, the four visitor experience mistakes that you can't afford to make. Jump onto your website now in an incognito window and have a good old play around. Also ask a friend to have a look at your website and see if there's anything that you can improve on. I'd recommend doing these checks every three months. Schedule it in your calendar so you don't forget. It may seem like such a small task, but it is crucially important to your new visitor's experience. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.